Hi, I'm George Pearson. For the past week, I've been playing around with this program, and I'll give you my impressions of this program as soon as we get past our little starting intro. But first, make sure that you click the like button and share if you enjoy this video. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out on any future videos. And if you want to find my complete training courses, you'll find a link for that up there in the upper right-hand corner. When you first start up the On One Photo Raw program, you get this welcome screen in here. There's a getting started video, which is real nice. They have a section here on how to replace Lightroom and Photoshop with this program, and then quick tips and tricks. And right here is the first problem with this program. It simply cannot replace Photoshop. It's just not powerful enough. Photoshop is a massive program that can do anything you want, and this program just can't compete with Photoshop. But it is a very good replacement for Lightroom. But first, let's take a look around and see what this program actually does. I'll just close down that welcome screen. We're in the Browse part of the On One Photo Raw program. And you can see here it's very similar to programs like the Adobe Lightroom or Adobe's Bridge program or even the Photoshop Elements Organizer. You have your thumbnail view in here, your slideshow view, and left-hand side access to your hard drives also cloud storage as well. Fast access here to pictures folder, catalog folders, hard drive, cloud, and so forth. If you look at the one I'm rolling over right now, it's currently selected and you see this nice bright orange outline so you can see your selected or currently active image. Across the top here we can give it different star ratings. Just click on your star ratings there or unclick to undo those. We can also give it a different color rating if you want to, like a green color rating or none. Or add it to your favorites right there, a little heart shape thing. Bottom left and right corners are the rotation buttons. So you can rotate your image around. And of course, the file name. On the right hand side, we have our basic info over here. There's your camera info right there. Here's the metadata metadata for EXIF, IPTC, and none. And across on the right hand side, buttons for going to the different modules in here inside of the program. Top module is the browse module, then your develop module, which is similar to the develop module in Adobe Lightroom, the effects module, layers, and resize. A few more things down below here. Notice we have albums, filters, tether shooting actually links it up with your camera and so forth, recent files that you've worked on. Down at the very bottom of this, you can change the view in here. Right now we're looking at the thumbnail view. Here's a full screen view. There is a film strip view, your image and film strip. And then right there, side by side view. I'll hold the control key down, click on a second picture here. Get side by by side comparison views in there. So different ways of looking at your imagery. Go back here to the standard slideshow view. You also, if you want to, you can catalog folders up. You actually drag folders over here into a catalog setup. Now this shows you one of the differences between this program and programs like Adobe Lightroom or the Elements Organizer, and that's that normally you're looking at images inside of your folder structure on your hard drive, not in a catalog. Putting these in catalogs will speed up the thumbnail view, but this actually shows your thumbnails very, very quickly anyway. Unlike, you know, again, in Lightroom, you have to create catalogs in Lightroom or in the Elements Organizer and then always view your images in those catalogs. You don't have to use catalogs over here inside of the On One Photo Raw program if you don't want to. You also can create albums just for better organization. If you have a lot of pictures, you can organize those into albums as well. So again, very similar in a lot of ways to Lightroom, but that one feature of not depending on catalogs is a very nice one. actually speeds up looking through a lot of images quite a bit compared to having to load in your catalog all the time as you do with Lightroom. Let's go over here and change to develop. I'm going to choose this picture right here. There we go. Just a little color change on it. So I'll go to develop. Let this open up. 
And right here you're seeing one of the problems with this particular program. Notice how slow it was to switch between the browse and the develop sections. Now the reason for that is I'm demonstrating this program in just a basic standard computer, nothing special. This isn't my graphics computer, which is very, very fast. This is just a basic computer. It's running Windows 8.1 with only 4 gigs of memory. So it's a fairly basic computer, nothing special. And this computer has some problems with this program. This actually is the biggest problem with the program is that it really requires a fairly sophisticated, fairly high-end computer to run well. It needs a lot of RAM, good hard drive space, fast computer. If you have those, this program is great. It runs very, very quickly. If you don't have that, this probably is not a good choice. It does tend to bog down. I can't even show you the layers module because if I did that, this program would slow down to almost a standstill. It takes several minutes to change and do different layers on this low-end computer. Okay, let's go back to the develop module here. Let's talk about this. Notice on the left-hand side we have presets. Lots of great stuff over here. Architecture, black and white, cinematic, color film, color grading, develop workspaces. You'll actually see a lot of this over on the browse module as well. Let's go over here to browse, click on the presets tab right there, and here you go again. Those are the same presets. I normally use these though in the develop module where I have a bit more control over them. Now these are preset develop settings. Let's come down here to landscape and we'll get little thumbnails. So you can go through here and look at these different thumbnails and see if you like any of these. So if you click on a thumbnail, it will then set up your settings over here, your adjustments, based upon that preset. So there's a lot of great stuff in here. Actually, you can really speed up your work when you're working with you know files. You just want to quickly do some fast adjustments. This will handle that for you very nicely. Let's take a look at working with the actual tools over here. We have two settings, overall settings and local adjustments. Overall settings works on the whole picture, as you would expect, and local adjustments is kind of like using an adjustment layer over in Photoshop where you can paint in your adjustment to just a small area. I'm going to start here on the tone and color section. Notice I have several sections, tone and color. If we scroll down a bit, we have details right here. Scroll down a bit more, lens correction right in there. On the tone and color, I'll click on the auto and see what it does. Actually, a pretty good job on that. It's a little bit light. We're kind of losing a bit of the quality in here of the sunset. Our colors are kind of a bit on the light hand side. Let's see what it did. It put contrast clear to the bottom. It moved highlights down a bit. It moved midtone way up and shadows way up. So that was its choice on that. We can see how well it did. It's coming out of the shadows. It's just coming out here to the blacks and whites even better. It pushed whites way up as well. If you hold the J key down, that will show you where you have clipping on this. If I pull the blacks down, you'll see there's blue showing me where the black clipping is. Now normally when you want a good image, you want to have a full black someplace and a full white someplace. I'm going to just pull this up until we just have just barely a full black. I'm kind of seeing it right there just in the very bottom of the boat, right in that area there. So I'll do that. Now on the whites, if I pull this up again, here's the J key hold, held down. You can see where it's clipping and going to pure white. So I'll pull this back until we just don't see any more of that red up there, right about there. So that's as light as it can get without going pure white at the top. And that's pretty good. Now we need to bring back in some of that twilight looks, so obviously our shadows need to be a bit darker. Let's pull our shadows down. And that's getting better, getting a bit moodier again in here. Let's look at our mid-tones. can bring those down just a bit. Get back some of that moodiness. So again, feels a bit more like it's a sunset picture. And bring our highlights up just a touch. So pretty easy to do your controls in here. Of course, you can type in numbers as well if you want to, if you know what you want. Let's come down to our second section down here. This is still in the basic image adjustments. We have our color temperature. Go a little cooler like that or a little warmer. Up to you what you want. A little cooler might be better for a morning image, a little warmer for an evening image. Let's leave that on the warm side. You can adjust saturation, vibrance, overall tint of your image in here. 
below that we can adjust the purity of your highlights and your shadows. What this does is it removes color tinting out of your highlights and your shadows. So you can use that to kind of clean that up a little bit. Now right here I'm going to click on just the name. Click on the name, it actually will hide that section. So there's the details, there's the lens correction section. So here's our tone color. Come to our details. You can also show and hide just like that on the actual imagery. Now in here this is our sharpening section. You can sharpen and a threshold for the sharpening. Noise reduction right here on luminance and adjust your detail there and color and adjust your detail. So if you have noise problems or sharpness issues, you can adjust that in here at the details section. And then of course in the lens correction allows you to adjust things such as color fringing and distortion and so forth. So nice range of adjustments in here with these different controls. Most pictures of course will be stuck right here in the tone and color is all you really need to do most of the time. So you have those different options. You have the control options over here and you have your presets on the left hand side to kind of speed things up. Now on the tabs here we have overall settings and also local adjustments. Now this allows us to come in and do localized changes in here. Notice that I have this little kind of paintbrush thing. I can adjust my size up here. There's the size of my brush. Just feathering on the edges, the opacity. This little bit here, this is a perfect brush. What this does is if you paint along the edge, it will only put the effect inside of that. You actually create a mask along the edge of your painting. Real nice feature. Kind of like the uh, background eraser tool over in Photoshop. Look at lighten, darken, vibrance, detail. There's a few more in here as well. We'll just do vibrance and I'll start by painting in right along the edge here. And notice how I'm getting a lot more coloration in there but only in this part of the image where I'm painting it in. So I actually come in and adjust the vibrance of my image very specifically this way without touching anything else. Very much like using an adjustment layer inside of Photoshop. Kind of does the masking for you automatically. Nice little feature there. Okay, let's take a look at the very, very bottom here. I have a preview. Here's the original and here it is with the preview. So you can see how you're doing. Now next down over on the right hand side we have effects. These are basically filters. and They're up here at the top. There are quite a few filters in here. Again, it's going to take a moment to switch this over into the effects section. We're still seeing some of our develop options. And this is what I was mentioning previously. The program's a little slow if you don't have a high-end computer. And there it goes. Okay, so let's look at our filters over here. Antique filters, different coloration based upon an antique look. Black and white. Bleach, Bypass, Blur, Borders, Color Enhancer, Cross Process, Dynamic Contrast. A lot of options in here. Little scroll bar right there and even some more down below. Here's a split toning look. So a lot of options to apply some effects right onto your image. The kind of thing that you normally get with plugins for the Lightroom program. Let's look at our borders. We'll just add a little border onto this one. I'll do this dirty warm border right there. Click on that and there's that dirty warm border, a little film strip effect across the top and the bottom looks like it's kind of an old film strip. Let's say I wanted to do something else in here as well in the overall settings here and there's the borders. I can show or hide the border controls right here. Lots of options as you can see on any of these specific filters as well. But let's hide that one. Let's add another filter. Let's come and do a, well, let's just do a noise reduction on this one. So I've added a noise reduction filter as well. And let's just hide that. So we have borders and noise reduction, two filters stacked one above the other here on the same image. They actually can have multiple effects, multiple effect filters on the one image. Again, very, very nice little feature. 
Now, you can do this also, overall or local as well. So you have, again, more control over here using that paintbrush tool to come in and paint in your adjustments. The next one over here on the right-hand side, this is the layers. Again, I can't show you the layers because this will bog down this particular computer and slow it down to a standstill. I should take about two or three minutes per layer adjustment in this particular computer. Again, I have no problem at all with this running perfectly on my fast computer. But on my slower computer, this is a problem. This is an issue. Resize down here. This simply allows you to resize your image for printing at different sizes. Very much like the image resize over in Adobe's Photoshop program. There it goes. So it's kind of a quick look through at the different features in here. And as you can see, the On One Photo Raw is actually a very nice program. And I think it's a great replacement for the Adobe Lightroom program. Now the problem here really is twofold. One is the cost and the other one is that need for a fast computer. This really does require a good graphics computer to be able to use this program properly without a bogging the computer down. So if you don't have a fast graphics computer, I wouldn't recommend using this program. The other one is price. This program costs $120. Upgrades are about $100. So it's fairly expensive for this kind of program. This is If this is all you're doing, that's fine. If you don't happen to have Photoshop or anything else, but you want a Lightroom-like program and you have a fast computer, I would choose this over Lightroom. But on the cost, it, it's nowhere near as powerful as Photoshop. And with the Adobe Photography Plan, you can get Photoshop and Lightroom for about $10 a month, which is about $120 a year. So for the exact same cost on a yearly basis, you can have Photoshop and Lightroom. I kind of consider that as getting Lightroom for free. Photoshop for $120 a year and Lightroom for free. So, you know, cost-wise, it's a bit on the pricey side if you are looking at it compared to Photoshop and Lightroom. Now, if cost isn't an issue, if you, you, know, you have a fast computer, $120 isn't a big issue for you, you want a good replacement for Lightroom, this is a good choice for that. But that's the only time I would recommend this. It really does require that fast computer. If you can afford the fast computer, you can certainly afford to do Photoshop and this as two programs. Just keep in mind, this does cost basically the same as Photoshop does, which is a much, much more powerful program. But this is a great program for working with photos this way, the, the kind of a Lightroom replacement with a lot more ability and options. Now, if you don't have a high-end fast computer, I would not recommend using this program. It's going to bog things down. It can be done, as you've seen here, I did a few things here. I can't do the layers on this computer, but I can do most everything else. And again, it's a nice program for that, but I would probably just stick with something that actually can handle memory much better. Adobe has no problems with smaller computers. For instance, this computer that I'm showing you this can run Lightroom without any issues at all. This also can run Photoshop CC 2018 with no problems at all. Adobe is much better at handling smaller memory amounts than this program is. So there you go, those are my recommendations. So if you, again, have a good computer, you don't care about the cost, this is a great replacement for Adobe's Lightroom program. If cost is a consideration, I'd recommend getting Adobe Photoshop and Lightroom instead of doing this. Or if you have a slower computer, I would definitely recommend not using this program. It will bog down on you. So there you go. That's our look then at the On One Photo Raw program. Thank you for watching my video. I hope you found it useful. If you like this video, click on the like button below to let others know. You can click the subscribe button so you don't miss any of my videos in the future. I'm frequently uploading new training videos. Don't forget to check out my website at howtogurus.com.